Did you get a real drink? No. <sighs> Listen, I'm not dehydrated. My piss is like black. I need rehydration. Black. Yeah. Awful. Stinks. Welcome to Killer Stories. I'm your host, Bobby Holmes, and this week I have Stuart Blues from British Murders back, and this is Killer British Murder Stories, Volume 2. Welcome back, Stu. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here as ever. And we actually just recorded an episode for his podcast that will be just about the same day uploading. I think mine is usually up on Wednesdays and yours is on Thursdays. So Mm -hmm. right about the same time, you'll have to go check out what we we recorded together just minutes ago. (laughs) And you can hear Bobby's drunk version of a horrible story. And mine mine, might be a little bit more. I'm I'm hungover. (laughs) Mine's going to be more of a solemn, deep, meaningful, heartfelt murder case and yours is like oh. so, so this guy he killed people <laughs> <laughs> all right Stu, be boring let's go wow um, <laughs> <laughs> so my story today is a rather unique one when compared to the stuff i usually cover not in the sense that you'll have heard of it because i know you won't have heard of it you nope, didn't I've... google it you told me the name and i resisted yep but what I mean is that this is actually, it's actually not a murder case. Mm. So no one dies in this story, but it is still true British crime. No yeah. one's dying this week. <laughs> Killer British murder stories. It's just <laughs> British stories. Okay. That's well, what it is. Okay. But it's still horrendous. And it's, it's the worst the UK has ever seen for this particular crime. So it is still up there as far as notoriety. So I just did the Dennis Nilsson case. You said yeah. he's basically like the serial killer in the UK. Uh, like the most well-known. No, not really. No, Dennis Nilsson has recently had a TV series, a <clears throat> drama series based on his story starring David Tennant. So he's quite mm-hmm. fresh in the minds of people. But Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper, he died in November last year. So he's fresh in everyone's memory. And Harold Shipman is the most prolific serial killer of all time. He's English and there's many more i know when i asked you i was like is it okay if i do this british story you're like oh we got plenty of assholes here by the way do you say arsehole arsehole yeah because <laughs> we spell it ass yeah i know but it arsehole sounds weird if you think that's hard to say you want to hear the name of my subject yeah, here let's hear it so i broke it down phonetically and this is his full name it's five words okay <clears throat> Ready? Ready. Reinhard Tambos Maruli Tua Sinaga. What are you gonna call him? I'm gonna I'm gonna call him Reinhard. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm gonna call him Ray. He was known as Ray. Okay. I've Ray. probably pronounced some of that wrong, but we'll go for Ray. Nice and easy. Um, mm-hmm. He was born on February nineteenth, nineteen eighty three, in the province of Jambi, which is in Indonesia. Have you ever been to Indonesia? No. <laughs> Have you? No. Do you know where Indonesia is? Uh, where would you hazard I, a guess? Ge- geography is not my strong point whatsoever. You know I'm no good at math, uh, technology, geography. We're adding to the list of what I'm not good at. I realize that. But like, mm-hmm. continue on. Just tell me where Indonesia is. <laughs> so I've, I've not been either, but it's in Southeast Asia. It's near Singapore, the Philippines, and Malaysia, which is where our good friend, Dr. Jules, lives from Riddle Me That True Crime. Yes, yes. Uh, Shout out, Dr. Jules. Shout out, Dr. J, OG, PhD. So his family was a Catholic, Ray's family, along with the rival Protestant version of Christianity. So you got Catholicism and Protestant, which are obviously rivals. Mm -hmm. Catholicism makes up about... Well, Christianity makes up 10% of the country's faith. The largest religion, can you guess what it might be? The largest religion? The largest religion? 
86 well, percent of indonesians subscribe hindu? to this no it would be hinduism by the way not hindu that's oh whoa sorry <laughs> hinduism it's islam christianity okay. is, the is the second largest so there's quite a disparity between first and second here's another question can you tell me the country with the lowest average height uh china oh. <laughs> Do I need to keep guessing or are you going to tell me? I will tell you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Continue. Okay, continue. Surprise, surprise, Indonesia is the... Interesting. The, so the average height for men in Indonesia is 62.2 inches, which is between five foot one and five foot two. Whoa, shorter than peewee. Yeah, shorter than peewee <laughs> Gaskins. Who is who I just did my episode on, on yeah. British murders, which you could go listen to. He was yes. five four. Yeah. So by contrast, can you take a guess as to the country with the tallest average height? Ooh, uh, no, I really have no idea. I have no idea who's tall. So it's <laughs> what the, countries? It's the Netherlands. What gotcha. do you think? It, what do you think the average height is in the Netherlands? Let's say six three. A little bit shorter, six foot, just okay. over six foot, seventy two point well, three like, six honestly, inches. Honestly, men here. I would say around six foot, typically. I, I'm what, not, how I'm do not you, you said you're six one? Mm hmm. So what I'm, do I'm classed as tall? Are you? Mm. I don't feel tall. My sister is about six foot, and I have a cousin who's a female, and she's six one, I think. So I think just my family is relatively taller, because mm. um, I'd say females are typically five two to five four five five in the in the states and men around six foot give or take yeah well in the uk the average height is five foot nine yeah so i'm six one which again i don't feel tall so when i play football and i go up for like a corner and mm -hmm. the, the opposition will say someone mark the big lad coming in or <laughs> I, i'll mark the big lad, and i turn around thinking who the fuck are they talking about um, <laughs> when uh, I think big, I think like uh, bulk, you know. So <laughs> when I hear big, <laughs> so you're saying I'm not, I'm not hench. You're not, but you're not bulky. No, you are not bulky. I need to go to the gym more then. So yeah, our subject Ray was five seven, so it's practically a giant in his homeland. So it was shorter than me. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He's softly spoken, always smiling. Mm -hmm. I've seen pictures of him. It couldn't have looked less threatening if he tried. The nice little kid, baby face, glasses, all that kind of stuff, which in a way is kind of how he got away with what he did for so long because he was so unassuming. Mm -hmm. Everyone saw him as this friendly guy, cheeky chappy kind of character, wouldn't hurt a fly. Do you have that expression? You wouldn't hurt a fly? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I just have to check because there's so much. I know. I, I know. So every, different. Every, little thing. <laughs> every time you text me something, I'm like Googling it and I'm like, what is this? It's so different. <laughs> Hanging out my arse. <laughs> that means hungover. <laughs> yep. My man Ray came to the UK in 2007 when he was 24. And he actually okay. came here to study as a mature student. Now, do you have mature students at your colleges in America? Do you know what I mean when what? I say a uh, mature student? Uh, like an older student, I'm yeah. assuming? Yeah. So okay. rather than rather I mean, than going straight at the normal age when you would, you would yeah. come back as an as an oh, adult if you like. Right. Yes, we have that. I mean, yeah. I don't think we like call them mature students, but yes, we have that. Yeah. Like even in my dental hygiene class, we had people in their forties probably going. Yeah, yeah. that would be a mature student, <laughs> even though he's only twenty four. So yeah. it, it gets a student visa, it moves to Manchester, which is in the north of England. You've heard of Manchester? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I live so, on Manchester Road. There's a Manchester road near my house, huh? which funnily enough, if you follow it, it takes you to Manchester. Yours probably does doesn't. it. No, yeah, it does yeah, not. We call, we call roads here the name of the final destination. So like Leeds, Makes sense. Ro Leeds Road would take you to Leeds, <clears throat> Manchester Road would take you to Manchester, York Road, etc. Uh, Salt Lake City is on a grid system and it's numbers and it should make sense, but it doesn't. So like one, one, two, nine South. 3,200 East. <laughs> so I moved here and I was like, I hate this. 
I, and I still don't understand it, even though it's like everyone's like, it's super. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's about what it seems like to me. So um, anyway, in, Ma- in Manchester, there's a very famous street called Canal Street. OK, so this mm-hmm. is it's situated in the city's gay village and it's recognized as the UK's LGBT capital outside of London. So mm-hmm. I've only been there once on a night out, but I had a great time. Um, mm-hmm. Really good night out. I mentioned Canal Street because Ray was openly gay, so that's why I'm mm-hmm. I'm mentioning this. So he frequented there quite often. So being homosexual in Indonesia isn't illegal, but it's widely considered as taboo or frowned upon. Let's say. Mm-hmm. So possibly why he came here was because he was having a bit of a hard time back in his home country. So in Manchester, he fits right in. He's constantly going on nights out, meeting new people. Um, even if he went out on his own, he's one of them guys that could just find a group of people and sort of mm-hmm. cling on and hang with you, like you can't get rid of him. One of those kind of guys. Yeah. So <laughs> my next question is, have you ever been out on your own? Have I ever been out on my own? No, my mom has instilled the buddy system within me. Yeah. <laughs> like you never go somewhere by yourself. You always have someone with you. And that was my question for you, because I know this is all pretty close to where you live. Mm-hmm. So like, have you ever felt unsafe or witnessed a crime? Uh, well, I got mugged once. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. On a night out. Yeah, I got I got punched. You need to carry one of those. I have like a self-defense. It looks like a pit bull and the ears are super pointy and sharp. Oh, I, I was far too <laughs> wasted to. You're just like, here's myself. my money. You're right. Yeah, yeah. There's my phone. There's my wallet. I don't know. Leeds can be quite no? bad. There's a lot of stuff goes down in Leeds. Like there's always murders and crimes and stuff going on here. Yeah. A lot of a big drug scene over here. Mm-hmm. It's like well, so I, I did that case, uh, bodies in the burg. I think it was that the shorter one, fifteen minutes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> not even like thirteen, something like that. But <laughs> yes, um, so I lived in Shady Side when I went to school. Well, first I lived on campus, and then the next year you were able to get off campus housing. So we lived in an apartment, and me and my roommate were walking back. We parked down the street and we were walking back from our car to the apartment and coming into our apartment, there was a first set of double doors. And then there was the area where there was like a mailbox. And then there was a second set of double doors, which you needed a key to enter. And then you could go in and there we were the first apartment on the right. So we're walking down the street and we kind of sense that someone's following us, Mm -hmm. but then we go into that first set of double doors and I'm wrestling for my key and I hear the door open and close and we turn around (laughs) And there's this guy in there with us and he just like sinks into the corner and leans there and he pulls his pants down, no joke, and starts masturbating. And we're like, oh my God, we're like wrestling for our keys, freaking out. And we open that door, we run in, I open our door, I'm the first one in and I slam my friend's arm in the door, which I feel bad for, but we finally got in, freaked out. We called the police, they came immediately, but he was already gone by the time he got there. And we both just saw him so briefly that when the police came to like describe him and I'm like, he was a dirty white man and this and that. And she's like, he was black. Like we, so we saw totally different yeah. things. All I saw was a penis I love that. and I looked away. <laughs> describe like, him. Um, he's six so, inches veiny. But I just thought I was getting raped, like for sure. But that's the closest thing to any crime I've ever experienced, but it was terrifying. Damn. But, Why? Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's my experience. I've had nothing as exciting as that, unfortunately. I know. But uh, back to Ray. So you regularly use gay dating apps such as Grinder and Hornet. Mm-hmm. Hornet. Apparently, those are gay apps. I did know Hornet. I did know Grinder. Yeah, I didn't know either. Honest. Mm. He was rather secretive <laughs> about his life and his family back home in Indonesia. His friends said mm-hmm. he never spoke about his parents or his two siblings. But having said that. Ray did rely heavily on the bank of mum and dad. Uh, his dad worked for a bank and he often wired Ray money for him to live on, pay for his tuition fees, pay for the flat and all that kind of stuff. So he was basically getting money from his dad to mm-hmm. live. So all the money he had was just, he was just spending it sort of willy-nilly. Do you know that term, willy-nilly? Yep, yeah, no willy-nilly. <laughs> <laughs> so he studied sociology at Manchester Uni in August 2007 and then he started a PhD course in human sociology 
at Leeds Uni in August 2012, but he never completed the course uh, and therefore never gained his PhD. So he, he dropped out of Leeds. It's obviously too hard for him. He, he did mm-hmm. submit his, his thesis in 2016, but he didn't achieve a pass mark. So they gave him a chance to extend it and redo it. He just didn't do it. He just walked away. Um, can, can you guess what his thesis was called? No. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. It was called <laughs> Sexuality and Everyday Transnationalism Among South Asian Gay and Bisexual Men in Manchester. <laughs> Bit wordy. Yeah, that was my second guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so realistically, this is a, this is a smart kid. Right. He's got mm-hmm. he's got brains. He's got book smarts, let's say. Mm-hmm. Here's another term for you. He's got money coming out of his ass. <laughs> you could say ours. I said ass. Yeah. So your R is like not that R. No, it's not ours. It's just ass. <laughs> ass. Right. But have you heard money coming out of your ass? Or something yeah. coming out of his ass? Yeah. You've got, yeah. You've got a, lo- a lot of something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just so, thought the R was more R. Ars. Yeah. It is okay. in your language, but not, not ours. <laughs> okay. So he's got minimal got bills, minimal bills to pay. He's got money coming out of his ass from his dad. That sounds wrong, but it's no wonder he was out all the time spending money like it was going out of fashion. I'm using all the terms here. Mm-hmm. So he lived a few doors down from a nightclub called Factory. Never been myself, but TripAdvisor suggests it might not be the best club in the world. <laughs> It's rated two and a half stars out of five. Yeah. Majority of the reviews are one star, which is terrible. Uh, apparently the bouncers are just a bunch of power mad wankers. 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 Yeah. They're just knobheads. They just you get to the front mm-hmm. and they say you're not on the VIP list, even though you are, all that kind of stuff. So Ray used to visit there regular. He used to find a lot of his one night stands there. So that's where he would go mm-hmm. cock hunting, yeah. if you will. So it wasn't the most stable when it came to relationships. He had a few short-term ones that came and went, but even those he didn't handle well when they ended. One such partner broke up with him, and he said he would drink a bottle of bleach if he didn't get back with him. (sighs) The boyfriend never came back, and he never drunk the bleach. So So empty threats. Yeah, he was was bluffing. So basically, he hates rejection, this kid. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And he, throw, he throws a temper tantrum if he doesn't get his own way. He's a bit of a loner. He didn't have like one solid friendship group. He sort of mingled between different groups of people, bouncing from one group to the other. And he was quite narcissistic and immature for his age, despite obviously he's a smart guy, but he was quite immature. Mm-hmm. Like he would always play the fool and stuff. Um, always how, updating... how old is he at this stage? I'm sorry. It was so obviously he... is at clubs, so... Yeah, so he started uni at, what, 24? So he's probably like 30 at this point. Okay, okay. So early 30s. Um, He's always updating his life on social media, putting pictures on Instagram, like outfit of the day, stupid stuff like that. (laughs) Hey, that that was the time. I did that stupid shit too. Go ahead. So, well, my next question, funnily enough, was going to be, as you are a bit of a technophobe and a fellow (laughs) 30-something, Can I ask your thoughts yeah. on individuals such as Ray who live their life online? Answer, you used to do that. <laughs> and I said, do you see any dangers to that sort of behavior? Uh, Did you? Yes. DMs, <clears throat> sliding in the DMs. Right. So when I first started Facebook, it was kind of right when Facebook became a thing. And yeah. it was just for college students. But we also had MySpace and that kind of stuff. I actually met... So my current husband and I dated from 15 on, (laughs) but (laughs) my current, my man I'm with currently, my husband, but we did have a break is what I'm saying. So I've been together with him for since we were 15 is what I'm getting at. But there was like a year that we weren't together when I was in college. And so I, (laughs) I had a blind date once and I get the fear of that. And I was like, I'm scared. I met him through like somebody I know on MySpace, but I don't know him and he doesn't know me. And so we were just chatting and he wanted to go out on a date. So I told my friends to follow us. <laughs> so we went and met for a date and my friends sat in the booth across mm. and just like watched us and made sure. And he was like, do you know them? Are that, I swear I saw them on you. And I was like, no, I don't know. 
I just pretended like I had no idea who they were, even though they were my roommates sitting like three tables over, like watching me, making sure that I wasn't going to get murdered that night. So yeah, I understand that there is a fear and I am not going to be someone to go meet a stranger without being watched by my friends. <laughs> good call. That's yeah. a good call. Even though Ray went out to all, all nightclubs all the time, he wasn't big mm-hmm. into the drug scene. Now, Manchester is pretty rife for drugs. So it's a shock mm-hmm. that someone who goes out all the time didn't partake quick, in any of that. What kind of drugs? Probably just main one being cocaine. Okay, I just didn't know what's popular there, I guess. Okay, cocaine, cocaine and cocaine, be cocaine and ecstasy or pills. Um, like club drugs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. party drugs, party yeah. drugs, yeah. Um, so having said that, though, it didn't mean that Ray wasn't partial to spiking other people's drinks with drugs. Mm. So he says he didn't do it himself. But do you? what do you call it? Do you call it lacing or spiking, we call it? Yeah, both of those. Or like, depending on what it is. I mean, if you were roofied, but yeah, Yeah. spiked, probably. Yeah. So what Ray would do is he would leave his flat on his own at like midnight, one in the morning, and he'd either go to factory, the nightclub, or just wander the streets of Manchester. There's actually CCTV of footage of him just like roaming the streets of Manchester, just looking for men on their own. They didn't even have to be gay men, just anyone that was Mm -hmm. a man on their own that looked lost. So what he'd do is he would say, right, come back to mine. You can charge your phone. You can have a drink, get your bearings before you sort of go on your way. So he'd also offer them drugs, which, you know, yes, please, is what Mm -hmm. they would normally say. I'll take it. Uh, Of course, it's free. (laughs) So back at his flat, he would lace his victims' drinks with GB. Have you heard of GB? GB. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, it's a slang. What's GB stand for? It's a slang term, but you know, like date rape drug. Yeah. Yeah. So the proper name is gamma hydroxybutyrate. I think I'm saying that right. Mm-hmm. Also, also oh. known as GHB or liquid ecstasy. So one of the, okay. slang, the slang name for it is GB. Okay. Uh, sorry, G- GHB, sorry, or GB. So a bit of research tells me that GBA, I call it GBH because that's gross bodily harm, but I mean GHB. <laughs> So GB can take from 10 minutes to an hour to take effect, depending on on the dose. And it usually lasts Mm -hmm. for several hours. Basically, it makes you feel drowsy, ultra relaxed and euphoric. Uh, It's commonly used as a date rape drug for that reason. The victims normally pass out till they're unconscious, Mm -hmm. uh, which leaves them extremely vulnerable to sexual assault. Common to have memory loss the next day, which is something worth bearing in mind for this story. Now, some people take GB recreationally. Because if you do a small enough dose of it, it's, it's like it's like you know uh, you know le- like people that sip lean and stuff, which is um, mm, so, wait say what you know lean the drink purple drank dirty sprite no. you not heard of that uh uh-uh. uh no right people mix tell like, me more it's a very American thing they mix really yeah cough syrup. why are you teaching me these American things okay I mean, well I know people who literally drink like a whole thing of cough syrup but I don't know about yeah, mixing but th- it. this is specific cough syrup though it's got um is it promethazine I think it's promethazine it's banned okay I think it's promethazine so do they mix cough syrup with something mi- to make a drink normally they put it in sprite okay so it's hence the name dirty sprite yeah or okay. co- codeine and promethazine in the cough codeine. syrup, yeah, okay, but codeine and promethazine. Um, so they add that to the drink and they sip it. It's called sipping lean, and it's supposed to give you a high, but you can easily get addicted to it. So I, I think GB is similar. I mean, I've mm-hmm. done I've done neither, so I'm only guessing. But yeah. from, from documentaries I've seen, it's like I think it's comparable. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I know people growing up in high school that would literally chug an entire bottle of cough syrup and i'm just like Bleh. like no thank you i can't i struggle to take the little yeah. well, that's probably why <laughs> because they're getting high that's probably why they did it but oh, uh, yes that was the purpose yeah so i, I guess by now you can kind of guess where this story is going mm-hmm. um ray basically drugged and raped multiple men in his flat the majority of the victims were white males aged 21 on average uh they're also mainly straight men he got a bit of oh. a kick he got a kick out of it because he called it <laughs> Um, that he was saving straight boys. That's what he <laughs> called this little game. Um, and he, have, he often boasted about his exploits to many WhatsApp groups. 
as well. Say what groups? You know, WhatsApp? No. You've not heard of WhatsApp? WhatsApp? No. <laughs> it's like you're an alien. The messaging app, WhatsApp. Uh, no, I don't know that. I am an alien, I apparently. How do you message know. people? Text? I don't know. Wow. I only have like so many friends do. I'm not. You've never heard what's, of WhatsApp? WhatsApp? WhatsApp. No. Jesus. <laughs> right. Basically, it's, it's an app on your phone and <clears> it's, like, <throat> it's like text, but you can send video um, pictures. You can, you can I mean, create. So, so like the same as texting. Kind of, but you can, you can create. <laughs> okay, but you, you need can, a separate app for it. Got yeah, it. Yeah. You can create groups of people and he would boast about what he'd done. So one such conversation in January 2015, after he had raped a 19-year-old male, without mentioning the rape, he opted instead to suggest to his friends he had simply pulled a straight boy. Pulled as in got off with. Mm-hmm. Um, so on this occasion, he said the man was arguing with his girlfriend in factory, the nightclub. And Ray mm-hmm. picked him up and they had sex at his flat. He said, quote, Super Ray saves straight boys from their monstrous girlfriend. <laughs> like, that's what he does. He saves them. Saves them. But really, he just raped them all unconscious yes. and sent them home. Yes. They have no idea yeah. that he they also, were saved. Exactly. He then sent a photograph of the victim to the group. Without, okay. without him. Unconscious. Knowing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and by the way, Ray filmed all of his rapes. Of course. For his mm-hmm. twisted pleasure. And mm-hmm. disturbingly, his friends, not knowing what had really gone on, were shocked at having seen the inside of Ray's room, like in the background of the picture, because mm-hmm. he's normally quite secretive about his room. One guy replied and said, you're always screaming, no, it's too messy. Then we were joking, male dead bodies were piling up under the bed, haha. Just like... <laughs> you're like, uh, maybe, but... Yeah. They're not dead. They yeah. just raped them. No, in there. I, I never killed them. I never killed them. Yeah, just raped them and let them go. Yeah. So another convo in July 2015. He told a friend his flat his flatmate. Sorry, was moving out. His friend said, you "So can he get... has a roommate. Oh yeah, he's and he's flat... bringing people home mm-hmm. and and raping them. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, "You can get in lots <clears> of straight <throat> boys now because like he'll have the the place to himself." And then um, Ray sent another photograph of another victim. And he said, you mean like this one? Because it was another straight boy that he'd pulled. Okay. And he sent this to his roommate, his flatmate. To to the WhatsApp group. Oh, okay. To another WhatsApp group. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And then his friend said, there's always a new one before saying, fucking hell, darling, you get a different straight guy every week. So along with- How do you do that, Ray? Oh, he's got a gift. (laughs) Ah, just lowering in those straight boys. Yeah, he's good at it. So along with filming all these rapes, he kept photographs of his victims as souvenirs, which he catalogued along with their respective bank cards and IDs. So he had like his own catalog spreadsheet kind of thing of a picture of the person, the bank card, a video. He'd he'd keep the phones, he'd go on Facebook and get photos to add to his catalog of these people. So anyway, he was finally caught and arrested on June 2nd, 2017 after one of his victims woke up mid-attack and phoned the police. So they searched his flat and they found so much video evidence of the attacks that they were noted as saying it was beyond a joke because literally he had filmed himself raping every single one of his victims. If you were to watch all of the footage they found from start to finish with no breaks, it would have gone on for days. Um, And he was convicted. Yeah, he was convicted of 159 sex offences, which included the rape of 136 men in Manchester between 2015 and 2017. But they do believe that he's actually committed sexual assault against 206 men at the least since 2007. The worst part, 60 of those men haven't even been identified yet. So they probably don't even know. Right. That, that comes on to what is actually the worst, worst part. Most of the men that he raped didn't even know they'd been raped. I mean, you wake up the next morning like, ow, <laughs> what did I do last well, night? <laughs> they only found out when the police contacted them and showed them oh, the shit. videos of themselves being raped. Oh, no. That's like 
Do you remember in the toy box killer? And that girl escaped and she mm-hmm. like didn't remember anything and they should yeah, be yeah. being like tortured. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, that's crazy. Absolutely oh horrifying. But it was prosecuted in four separate trials. I'm guessing because there were just so many victims between mm-hmm. 2018 and 2020. The outcome being concurrent life sentences with an initial minimum term of 30 years. Now, mm-hmm. I say an initial term because the case was investigated by the Court of Appeal shortly after. That's like our court system that you can look at cases that they think are unjust mm-hmm. um, or, or not enough. Like after they've been yeah, completed, so after the, you can after appeal the, it. Yeah, basically. Okay. Or if they <laughs> think it's too lenient, they can mm-hmm. go in and, and revisit it. So that resulted in Ray's minimum sentence being increased in December 2020 last year from 30 years to 40 years. Um, so, yeah, just to break down the Court of Appeal, it's the highest court within the senior courts of England and Wales, the second in the legal system of England and Wales. It's only second to the Supreme Court of the UK. So as much as the UK is four countries, there is still different kind of laws for Scotland, Wales, and then, sorry, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and then England and Wales are like combined. Mm-hmm. So we do okay. have different kind of um, laws and jurisdictions a little bit, but it's pretty much all the mm-hmm. same. So mm-hmm. no, like you said in the US, each state has its own law, doesn't it? But then you have mm-hmm. federal law, all these weird little county yeah. laws and stuff. Well, I mean, there's lit- there's 50 states. So it's mm. crazy. It literally can differentiate from state to state, which leaves you, it's like up in arms wherever you live, honestly. So that, that's, that's so strange. So yep. strange. Yeah. Did he frequent, did it seem like the same places that he went to? Because yeah. at least even in Pittsburgh, where it was a city, the places I went to, you had, it was small enough that you could notice the same people if they came in over and over. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that sometimes people pick up on that, like as a bartender, they go, this dude is always looking for dudes or like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Sometimes I feel like you would pick up on those kinds of things, Maybe. but yeah, he always, always used to go to that club called Factory. And then, like I said, sometimes he would just roam the streets. Yeah, clubs are probably busier. I was mm. not a club person, I guess, but mm. bars. But bars, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have, um, just going back to the legal system, we have the Crown Prosecution Service, or CPS. So they're the principal public agency for conducting criminal prosecutions in England and Wales. So the CPS has described Ray as being the most prolific rapist in British legal history. So check Mm -hmm. this out. Ray's legal team Mm -hmm. tried to claim that the men he raped were only pretending to be asleep. How can can you live with yourself? I get get that lawyers lie, but come on. Back to the toy box killer. He was like, oh, all these women were willing participants. And he videoed his stuff too. Yeah. And I'm like, how can you, I guess you can't really prove that they're not via the video because they, yeah. could, they could be pretending to be sleeping, but really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the, the thing is like, that's not Ray saying that. That's his legal defense team right. saying that. How well, can you live with yourself saying that? Shit? I know. Yeah. Because yeah, they're trying to win a case. Yeah, but I don't have, think have I could dignity. defend. I don't think I could defend people like that, period. Like, that could not be my job. No. I couldn't do it. It says no. his his barrister accepted an assessment of Ray by psychiatrists and prison staff, which stated that he was highly dangerous and at great risk of, of reoffending. So have you heard of a whole life order? Like a life sentence? Kind of, but it means that you'll, you don't have... When you get a life sentence, you get a minimum term to serve. So it's not actually life. So Sometimes. But yes. Well, in the UK, that's what it is anyway. Okay. You, If you get sentenced to life in prison, that's mm-hmm. followed by with a minimum term to serve of 25 years, let's say. Mm-hmm. Right, so after, yeah. After 25 years, you're eligible for parole, but you might not get it, but you're eligible for it. Now, a mm-hmm. whole life order means you're sent to prison for life with no possibility of parole. Ever. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole life term. There's not a minimum term. So mm-hmm. one of those was considered in this case when it was looked into by the Court of Appeal, there's five judges on the panel who looked at it and they refused to give him a whole life order. They basically said that whilst his offences were very serious, 
they didn't feel that a whole life order was justified. But then <laughs> they've also said, is it great risk of reoffending? No, that makes no sense. So do you, do you trust this guy? No. Is he a risk to the public? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think he'll repeat offend? Guaranteed. Should we just send him to prison for life? Nah, don't think it's no, warranted. No, 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 no. It's not warranted. Uh, but I feel like 150 plus counts of rape should mm. put you in life for, or in prison for life. And sometimes it was like five times throughout the evening he would rape oh, his no, victims. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, and to think I traumatized mm. you, but just living your life normal. And then you go back and you realize that that's happened to you. Mm. I mean, I don't even know if I'd want to know. <laughs> That's terrible, I, but I like, I would. I'd rather not know and live my life on than then I'd have like nightmares every night. Yeah, it'd be bad. But that, yeah, that's my story of <clears throat> Reinhard Tambos Maruli Tua Sinaga. Yeah, yeah. The, most, the most prolific yeah. rapist he, in the history of the UK. Text me or messaged me saying that this was the name of who he was going to do. And we were supposed to do Drunk Edition. And I was like, good luck. But sober stew did it i did it and i didn't send you that message on whatsapp because you've never fucking heard of it. Uh, now i'd be like don't know what whatsapp is because i'm a loser <sighs> that's baffled me that there's one there's a comment on my show that bobby said about her killer which left me speechless i think you not having heard of whatsapp is even more shocking than that i don't think so but I am grateful to have you as a friend because you help me out with all my IT stuff. Obviously, I'm not the best. And so any question I have, I come to Stu and he helps me with simple as Instagram, Twitter, YouTube questions as I will be asking about WhatsApp now. <laughs> I think unlike the episode where you tell the story with me, you won't have much editing to do. We'll see. You will. I, I I don't know. I laugh I've, a lot and this is been stupid, flawless. So we might need <laughs> I've been flawless. Flawless. All right. <laughs> well, thanks, Stu, for coming on Killer Stories. Tell us where we can find you, Stu. The podcast, you can find me. Spotify, Apple, anywhere you listen to them, YouTube and Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and TikTok. Like my TikTok channel's blown the fuck up overnight. Yep. Because I cover stories about fictional serial killers like Michael Myers, and I tell it in a way as if it's true. And it, <laughs> you can, you have confused me it really a couple triggers of times. People. I'm like watching it, and I'm like, wait, I know this. It says hashtag true crime, <laughs> and it cracks me up every time because it's not true. It is it's a true. fictional horror film, but. Continue. Yeah. But the, ha the <laughs> hashtags are there just for exposure, just because it's funny. It, it is funny. So I got over 60,000 on that now. And mm -hmm. see, since we've been talking on my British murders, I've got 600 new followers. No. Yeah. On TikTok. Yeah. Just since we've been talking right now. Yeah. But Shut the funny up. thing is, like, looking at these comments, it's funny. You get people that have no content or no followers and they'll go, dude, this is a fake story. Just stop. Just stop. And I'll just put no. I love reading the comments on your shit. It's oh, hilarious. Brilliant. So, oh, no. I mean. You, user 2178953's told me to mm -hmm. stop. I think I better stop. Yeah. You uh, totally should. Listen to that much? user. I will. But yeah, that's that's where you can find all my shizzle. But the yep. best part is that people ask me to cover stories and films now. So I don't even have to think about what I'm making. Mm -hmm. They'll just say, do one on like um, Hannibal. Oh, I know. So I'll right. just make a note yeah. of that and do, do one on Hannibal. And that's what, so I get, I have a list of people who have written into me with mm. suggestions that I've been pulling from. I notice how you say suggestions. How the hell do you say it? <laughs> just suggestions. <laughs> if they don't put that G, su suggestions. Well, there's two Gs. But I know, so double the good. Say it, Stu. <laughs> suggestions, suggestions. It's like you say vehicle. You, that's because that is how you say it. How do you say it again? Vehicle. Vic, vehicle. Yeah, but you also say pedophile, which is wrong. No, okay. You say okay, agree to you disagree. Say aluminum, and you even spell it different when it's aluminium. 
Aluminum is spelled like aluminium. No, no, it's spelled aluminum. Yeah, but, that's but how the, I say it. But the correct thing is aluminium. Oh, oh shit. Shizzle. All right. Shizzle. <laughs>